You may have heard the expression, sleep is priceless. If you're like me, you may be thinking, are you sure about that? Because I can finish this assignment tonight and then sleep more tomorrow. But sleep isn't like my student loans, no, no. I can't make up for it at a later date. This is my wake up call in regards to why we as humans need not just food, water and shelter, but also sleep. My name is Lily, and I am a bilingual nursing student at the University of Alberta. Who am I to tell you about sleep? Many times over the course of my academic career, I've prioritized other tasks over sleep, which is not recommended. You may know the feeling, hearing your alarms in the morning, but failing to wake up to them. Perhaps I'm not the best person to deliver this talk, but sleep is something we can all learn about. And I want us to understand why we have to sleep. Let's say I slept for less than five hours because there's a midterm exam the next day and I was up studying and cramming for it. True story, unfortunately. The next day, I'm feeling really stressed out. My nervous system is in high gear telling me to fight or flight because of my sleep disruption. And during the midterm itself, it's hard to focus and it's difficult to recall my knowledge because lack of sleep can block memory consolidation and affect performance and cognition. After school, let's say my dad asks me if I want to practice driving that day. Well, I better be careful because drowsy driving causes 6,000 fatal car crashes in the United States every year. Cutting back on sleep for short-term benefit isn't like cutting processed sugar out of your diet for a while. The truth is, Sleep affects much more than just my brain. My glucose regulation is toppled and my appetite is affected, making me crave more carbohydrates. It has an impact on my mood and motivation, affecting how willing I am to do physical activity and exercise. My cells don't regenerate as efficiently and it leads to me having a more tired appearance. I'm more likely to even fall sick. If I continue down this path of sleep loss, it's possible I experience insomnia more often and the balances within my body are thrown off, increasing stress hormones and inflammation, leading to a higher risk of obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and even death. The purpose of going over all these health effects is not to scare you into sleeping more, but to understand why we sleep in the first place. If there's one thing I know as a nursing student, it's biology. What happens exactly when we do sleep as much as our bodies need? Sleep gives back to your body. Looking into biology, no one would dispute that we need food for our body to make energy and we need water to have enough blood to go around as some examples. If we look at someone who's sleeping, on the outside, it might just look like they're like snoring but on the inside, there's a lot more going on. For one, your immune system is strengthened, making vaccines even more effective. If there's one thing you don't wanna be doing nowadays, it's getting sick. And after a long day of work, your body cells can do some much needed repair by muscle growth and protein synthesis. And now it's time for a joke. What do you call a sleeping bull? a bulldozer. So here's the catch. If someone told you an actually funny joke today, your memory consolidation would be worked on while you're asleep. So you have a better chance of remembering that joke and sharing it with someone else tomorrow. And this applies to other information too, such as your studies. Up in our brains, there's a lot going on. And there's a chemical that is produced and built up as our brain cells are active. It's called adenosine. It induces a feeling of tiredness and when you sleep, the brain can clear out adenosine and other waste products, allowing you to feel more alert when you wake up. Here's a real life example of this. You may know someone who is awfully cranky before their coffee. Coffee is a substance that alters our chemistry. It blocks adenosine so we don't feel tired. The World Health Organization has a definition of health I like to refer to. A state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. Socially, sleep can help you get along with others by improving mood and behavior. Mentally, 
Sleep can work towards reducing stress and improving cognitive processes like coping and problem solving. And we talked about on the physical front, how your cells and your brain can benefit. The question I want to ask you, are you physically, mentally, and socially well when you lack sleep? But I don't have to be the one to tell you to sleep. Your mom will. Just kidding. Your body will. Have you ever been so hungry that your belly starts grumbling, telling you that it's time to eat? Well, what about yawning or the sensation of drifting to sleep because you're so tired? These are also built-in mechanisms that are saying, hello, I'm tired, it's time for bed. Furthermore, you don't have to take my word for all this information. I had to Google all of this and it still might not convince you. So in your own experience, I want you to recall how foggy it feels after a night of bad sleep compared to how refreshing a good night of sleep is. If you don't sleep well, it's like stepping into a puddle because even after you're up and out of that puddle walking around, the lack of sleep will leave imprints on other systems and aspects of your health throughout the day. You may be looking at yourself or at your professor, your teacher, your parents and wondering, well, why am I not learning about this in school? Perhaps it's because they don't want us to fall asleep in school, but even Statistics Canada recognizes that sleep gets too little time in the spotlight. In my experience, sleep deprivation is actually normalized in academic institutions, and there's a sense of productivity and a strong desire to perform well in place of sleep quantity and quantity sometimes. So what are some things that we can do about this? First, learning. By listening here today, you've taken that first step in learning about sleep. Awareness drives behavior changes. There's so much research out there about what sleep can do and how a lack of it can destroy you. And I've just shared a little bit of it. Second, reflecting. Is your sleep setup comfortable? Do you have a nightly routine to calm down and get into a sleepy state? Don't be afraid to sleep more. How tomorrow goes could depend on the quality of sleep you have today. Third, sharing. Share something you learned about sleep with a colleague or a family member. I'm not telling you to suddenly become a sleep cheerleader or change your sleeping habits, but to recognize that our outlook on sleep is something we need to shift from secondary to sleep as sustenance. In no way am I a sleep specialist, but I think it is important to understand the link between health and sleep. There are various sleep problems that are complex and outside of my scope. So I urge you to see a health professional if you're experiencing those problems. Nevertheless, sleep helps sustain us as humans. It's one part of the puzzle of health, along with all the rest of the things we need to maintain, such as food, hydration, and physical activity. But sleep is one where you don't have to move or even think. You have a daily chance to reap the benefits of sleep. And the best part is, it doesn't cost a penny. Let's let our conscious selves better appreciate our unconscious hours. Thank you so much. I hope you sleep soundly.